felons get a raw deal when it comes to employment. Despite the fact that approximately 70 million or one in three Americans have a criminal record, it can present a difficult barrier when it comes when it comes when, uh, to overcome in a job scenario. Um, first, I will lay out our plan for the debate, and then I will move on to uh, our arguments one, two, and three, giving evidence and impact for each. Our plan for the topic is that employers would know the criminal history of the candidate, but once the job is offered, the employer would have the option to look at the criminal history of the candidate after the, um, the candidate has been offered the, jo the job. As so basically what would happen is the, um, the employer would offer the job and say as long as your criminal history is clean, you may have the job. Um, an explanation of this is that if you struggle to, when you struggle to pay your bills and you don't know where your next bill is coming from, uh, studies show you are more likely to, um, get, to end up incarcerated once you fall out of that cycle. It's difficult to bring out. When people get out of jail, they usually have no money or a stable home to return to. Studies show that people resort to crime only if they um, determine that potential benefits outweigh the cost or consequences of community um, theft. Therefore, people living in poverty are more likely to commit burglary, larceny, or theft. Um, that leads us right into our first argument, um, which is people who can't find jobs because of previous crimes will be led to crime again. According to editorial board of the New York Times, a better approach is to emphasize that the need for change in attitudes about people with criminal record, so-called ban the box laws, now on the books is about a dozen state laws um, that now require employers to consider applicants uh, before full, wait, um, more fully before asking about their criminal history. Some states offer employers tax breaks or reduce their legal liability for hiring applicants with a Restriction in their past. In the end, everyone um, everyone benefits when people with criminal records are not shut out from the opportunity to be productive members of society. Um, without jobs, without jobs, um, only the old, many people's only option is crime. This is important because we will have more crime and not enough people to be productive members of society. Um, that argument. Our second argument is that a substantial portion of the population has a criminal record, most of whom have been arrested on minor charges that don't pose a serious threat. According to the Nas National Institute of Justice, most are for relating minor or non-violent offenses. Among the nearly, <coughs> excuse me, among the, yes. so you see the employers would have the option to see the criminal records after they offer the jobs, but according to the New York Times, most employers will revoke the job offer or fire the person once they are hired. Your thoughts? Um, as we go in later into our other arguments, once, um, as I said before, they really, if as long as the, my second speaker will go into this so I can finish going over our second argument. Um, arrests, as I was saying, uh, um, among the nearly 14 million arrests reported in 2009, only 4% were considered many among the most violent crimes, which include murder, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault. The remainder of arrests in 2009 were for one, robbery crimes, which accounted for 18% of arrests. These include burglary, larceny, theft, motor vehicle, arson, vandalism, stolen property, forgery, and counterfeiting, fraud, and embezzlement. Two, drug offenses, which accounted for 12% of arrests. These include, um, Production, distribution, uh, okay, or use of controlled substances. Three other offenses, which are accounted for 56% of all arrests. These include disorderly conduct, drunkenness, prostitution, loitering, driving under the influence, and weapons violations. We need to give people opportunities to rise up and be a part of society again, despite their criminal charges that they may have had. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. You may begin. Creating a safe environment is essential to any business. Don't employers have the right to know if their employee used to be involved in violent crimes? 
our counter plan is, uh, is that the opposition would like to clarify something. We don't believe someone arrested for shoplifting 20 years ago should be banned from getting a job. However, employers have the right to know whether their babysitter is a pedophile or their employee is a murderer. We would adopt the same plan states like Texas have, where, uh, where seven years after the employee has committed a low-level or non-violent crime, the, uh, the, crimes, uh, the crimes would be the ones that, uh, the crimes checked would be the ones that the, that the employee is particularly vulnerable to inside of the work, workplace. Uh, for example, if you were a, a pedophile, uh, uh, that should be given when you're applying for a, pre, for, a, for example, for a job for a preschool teacher. Now onto our reputation. So your first argument is that people, uh, people who can't find jobs have higher risks of, uh, of crimes, and uh, we'll get into our, uh, our, our, our counter plan directly refutes that by saying that those people will be able to get jobs if they're minor crimes or non-violent crimes later on. Uh, and our plan actually works off of that, as I will get into later. Also, you guys were talking about that people, people uh, minor charges, and our plan directly helps us by saying that it's only uh, low-level crimes and, uh, and non-violent crimes. Uh, okay, now onto our first contention. Uh, employers have a, vari a variety of solid reasons for uh, conducting background checks that include criminal history. Uh, according to the Society for Human Resource Management, there are many reasons that employers conduct appropriate levels of screening for prospective employees through a background investigation, a reference check, or both. One of these is that they avoid injury, both physical and legal. For example, there's this idea of negligent hiring. Let's say you, you don't look into somebody's past and they have an assault charge. Um, if they injure somebody in the workplace, the person that is injured can actually sue the company because of this, uh, this, idea, this idea of negligent hire, the fact that they didn't look into it. Also, it maximizes uh, productivity. Uh, there's this idea in hiring where it's hire the best and reject the rest. So you can look at past performances and, for, uh, and past crimes by seeing uh, you can ref this reference check, reference check, looking back on it, helps you see their produ productivity in, uh, in previous jobs. Um, also, uh, our, on to our second contention. There's a reasonable presumption of safety. According to Forbes, 76% of all inmates end up back in jail within five years. So the likelihood of the person sitting next to you going back in five years, is that really the kind of uh, co-worker you want? You want? If they weren't hired because of their uh, because of their criminal past, that person would not be a liability. Uh, why uh, why should the company be at uh, be at risk for for lawsuits and potentially go bankrupt? Judge, what this comes down to is the employer's knowledge of the employee. And with our plan, all we have to do is prove that in one situation the employer should know the employee's uh, past criminals. And we have clearly done that, Judge. Thank you, and that's why you should vote for uh, opposition. Of communities. 
Improving education job opportunities for these individuals has a recognized effect of reducing crime and making our community safer. First, I will go on to refuting our opponent's points and while just restating our plan and stating our, our and impacting our arguments one, two, and three. So um, I just like to refute Kate's POI that she said that um, the job will then be revoked after a um, single criminal history. But we will, I will do this by saying that with our plan, it would give people an opportunity to explain their past crimes, whether it's minor or violent, therefore making them um, be able to tell their employers. So um, their counter plan was that you would have to, um, uh, it wasn't exactly clear to me, but um, I got one point that they would have to wait seven years after a nonviolent crime. But this is actually a very long time, and this can make people vulnerable to recidivism, which is our first point, which I will go into in detail later. And their first argument is that there are a variety of solid reasons to check backgrounds. Um, but, sorry. <laughs> they, so their second, um, in the, for their second point, they said that um, within five, that people are likely to go back to jail within five years. But they're contradicting themselves when they're, what, because their plan clearly states that incarcerated workers will have to wait seven years, and five years is in that seven years time period. So if people are, if they're thinking that people are going to go back in jail five years, their plan states that you have to wait seven years for a nonviolent crime. I will now go on to stating our plan. So our plan is that employers would not know the criminal history of the candidate, but once the job is offered, the employer would have the option to look at the criminal history of the candidate. So what is this? What this is saying is, the person who is looking for a job hunter. No, thank you. A job hunter would apply um, if someone if a job hunter has a criminal history, they would apply like any other candidate, and then after they offer the job based on their based on their qualification for the job, not including their not including their criminal history. If they are given that job, employers would then have the option to look into their criminal history. Uh, which is a way that these people can fairly get jobs, and then after they can check them. So, no, thank you. I will now go on to our first argument. Our first argument is that people who can't find jobs because of previous crimes will be led to crime again. This is recidivism. According to an article by the New York Times, people with criminal records often face all manner of entrenched and unjustified prejudice. Studies have found that job applicants who reported having a criminal record were 50% less likely to receive a callback or job offer. According to The Atlantic, April 5th, 2016, an article by, no, thank you, uh, by Kyle, Mikhail Zinsay states that lower class youth commit four times more violent crimes than middle class youth. This means that without money or a job, youth are four times more likely to commit a crime again. Um, if, we don't, if, if, if people who are, who are incarcerated for crimes are completely stricken of their opportunities to get a job. They are more. Um, they are more likely to. They are more likely to commit a crime again, landing themselves right back in jail. Is this really improving our society by limiting all of these people, over 2.2 million men and women, from not having a job just because of something they have done before? When it has been proven that when they come out of jail, they are they are um, less likely less likely to reoffend if they have a job and a life and money to live on. Um, I will now go on to our second argument, which is a, substa a substa substantial portion of the population has a criminal record, most of whom have been arrested on minor charges that don't pose a serious threat to a workplace. According to a new study by the National Institute of Justice, nearly one third of American adults have been arrested by age 23. This record will prevent people from stuff. obtaining employment, even if they have paid their dues, are qualified for the for job, and are unlikely to reoffend. At the same time, it is it is the chance at a job that offers hope for people involved in the criminal justice system. System, as we know, um, involved in the criminal justice system to get back on their feet and be uh, part of our society. Although many offenses, such as property crimes or drug offenses, are behaviors that may harm the community, they do not constitute the most serious violent offenses, such as murder, rape, robbery, and ag ag aggravated assault. Thank you, Judge, and this is why you should vote the proposition.
checks. Such a simple idea, yet so many benefits. I'd like to start by refuting my opponent's points, kind of clearing up the plan. Then I would like to go into our own contentions and finally weigh the impact of this debate. So I know that our plan has kind of been all over the place, so I'd like to clear a few things up. So our plan is that for certain jobs, boxes would only be checked if their previous crime applies to the new job. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say that your previous offense was for kidnapping. Now, if you had a previous offense for kidnapping children, let's say you would not be allowed into a preschool, but you would be able to get a job somewhere else, such as working like as a barista, where your crime wouldn't really affect the job that you had. Making sure that people can actually get the job, get actual jobs without causing harm to the workplace. So I hope that is cleared up. Now I'd like to refute my opponent's points. They talked about recidivism, but with our plan, we really, we are taking out a way like a, um, discriminating against nonviolent crimes. We're focusing on violent crimes that apply to the workplace. So recidivism for nonviolent crimes would not happen again. Furthermore, recidivism for the violent crimes are more likely to happen, but at the workplace. And all of a sudden, these violent crimes not only fall on the person who committed them, but the people in the workplace and the employer. This means that it is harming way more people than if that employer rejected that person. Now I'd like to get on to their second contention, which is about how many people have a criminal record. But as previously stated with our plan, we are eliminating that people would have to um, disclose small violent crimes and only things that apply to the workplace, therefore um, completely refuting their second contention. Now, I'd like to clarify um, a uh, another thing about the plan, my first speaker stated that you had to wait seven years after nonviolent crimes, but he actually meant to say violent crimes. So you would have to wait seven years after committing violent crimes. So I hope this is cleared up. Now, I'd like to go into our own contentions. Our first one is that employees have a variety of solid reasons reasons for conducting background checks that include criminal history. Yes. Um, they said that you, you have to wait seven years for violent crimes, but this just makes people who are waiting those seven years very vulnerable to recidivism. They would you could, they could possibly commit another crime, land, land themselves back in jail, not in helping our society okay, at all. Thank you. Not thinking okay, job. thank you. Waiting seven years actually makes them think about what they've done after putting them directly after their harsh experiences in jail, right back into a job where they can harm other people, actually will make it worse where they can seek help during those seven years without having the issue of committing a crime at their job if they have committed a serious violent crime, which is like less than 3% of all crimes. Now, according to the Society for Human Resource Management, employers have many reasons. And one of them is avoiding injury. No one in the workplace should have to live in fear of having money stolen, of having people in their workplace hurt, of being scared that their new employer is going to shoot up the workplace. No one should have to live in that fear. We need to maximize productivity, and we need to make sure that jobs have a safe, friendly environment. And this is why employers should have the right to know if they're future employee has committed a violent crime that may put their employees and them in serious harm. Now, our second contention is there's a reasonable presumption of safety. Now, let's imagine a preschool. The employer is looking to hire a new preschool teacher. And let's say that this preschool does not have background checks. Now, they hired this new employer who seems like a wonderful person, but in the next week, two of the children are kidnapped and held for ransom. This is what it's like to have no background checks. We need the people to be informed. We need these employers to be up, able to have the right to make sure that the children in the preschool are safe. According to Forbes, 76% of people who committed crimes end back up in jail. This means that they are going to commit another crime, and if we hire them, they're going to commit this crime in the workplace. Now, Judge, we'd like to weigh this debate on what is best for the people. Now, on the proposition, we have violent acts in the workplace. We have employers. We have employees. We have people at the businesses at risk. We have businesses breaking down. We have people dying. Judge, let's look at the opposition. We have businesses thriving, which means that we may even get to boost the economy. We have a safe environment because, and these workplaces are going to be a safe place. Judge, we need a world where employers and employees will no longer live in constant fear of violent acts of their future hired people. Everyone in the workplace has a right to be safe. We want what's best for our world and our children. And this is why the opposition has won this debate. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> All right, offer battle.
Oh yeah, you're. Right Are you guys sat on the wrong side? How confusing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we okay. this one the last oh, bit. Rob, Rob goes there. Rob goes there. Oh, yeah, that's it. All right, okay. Whenever you're ready. Imagine you are an employer looking to employ a preschool teacher. You want this person to be encouraging, great with kids, and most importantly, safe. You don't want someone like a kidnapper coming in and harming your children. As an employer, it is your right to know who you are hiring and if this person can harm these children. So, I will get reputations and find to impact this debate, and finally, I will leave this debate. Now, Judge, it's been a really confusing debate, so let me take you Yeah, sort of. Okay. Just think for a second. Sorry, Sorry about that. My pen ran out. Imagine you are an employer looking to hire a preschool teacher. You want this person to be encouraging, good with children, but most importantly, safe. The last person you would want to hire is a kidnapper. So as this employer, it is your right to know who you are hiring for the safety of your school, yourself, and the children. I will be done with refutations and thoughts impact this debate and finally I will leave this debate. Now, Judge, this has been a really confusing debate, so I'd like to go through the flow and put crystallize and clear up the debate. Now, I want to have a plan where basically employers would find out about the criminal history after they've offered them the job. But according to the New York Times, most um, employers would actually revoke the job once they find out the criminal history or they will just fire the person as they get the job. Now my opponents mentioned that people have the time to explain their past experiences to the employer, but the thing is, once again, according to the New York Times, most employers would fire this person or revoke the job offer before the like, potential employee has a chance to explain themselves. Therefore, this plan is completely irrelevant to this debate and should be straightened from the battle. Their first contention is about recidivism. I have one response to this. This is completely solved by our counter plan. In our counter plan, criminals can still get jobs but the jobs cannot be related to the crime they committed. So for example, if you are, were committed of identity theft and you want to work for a credit card company, the credit card company would have to know if you had committed identity theft because that could be a threat to the company. But if you were shoplifting a store a couple years ago and you want to work for the credit card company, they wouldn't have to know about that. So in this, it, with this point, you can see, clearly see how this recidivism point is completely irrelevant to this debate because these people can still get jobs. Now their second contention is that most people have criminal records for non-violent crimes. But this is also repeated by a counter plan where low level crimes don't have to be listed on your job applications. Therefore, this point should be stricken from the ballot. So, looking at the sheer number of points standing on the proposition side of this debate, you can see how they have no points standing. Now, on the opposition side of this debate, the response to our counter plan would bring up the seven years for the, violent, for the violent crime committer to commit another violent crime, crime or have recidivism. But the thing is, if you commit a violent crime, chances are you're going to go to jail for longer, for se longer than seven years or at least seven years. So these seven years still count when you're in jail. I just like to clarify that as my first speaker stated. So when you get out of jail, chances are your time is up and you can go and get a job. That's just ensuring that you have a little gap time in between jail and when you get this job. Therefore, this, this reputation or counter plan is not irrelevant, our counter plan still stands in this debate. Now they have completely dropped our second intention about the reasonable presumption of safety, as well as our first contention when we say that employers have good reasoning as to know why their employees have criminal history. So therefore, if we look at the sheer number of points on both sides, we can see how the proposition has no point standing, or opposition has every single point standing, as well as our counter plan. Now, Judge, I would like to take move on and impact the debate. Our first contention is that employers have a variety of reasons as to know the crimes that their potential employees have committed. If you are an employer, you have the right to know for the safety of your company, the safety of yourself, and for legal issues, because you don't want to put yourself in a position where you are at risk to a legal crime being committed. Now, our second intention is that there is a reasonable presumption of safety. As an employer, you should be able to protect yourself and the people around, around you. The last thing you want to do is to put your other employees or your company in a life or death situation. You want to avoid this and move past this and hire the best possible people for your company, not hire someone who could tear your company apart. I would now like to move on to 
identify some major clashes to make. The first clash is about recidivism. On the proposition side, they say they're rec to decreasing recidivism, but they are increasing the lack of safety. That's a thing. Are they increasing the lack of safety because they are putting criminals right? They are putting criminals into danger into workplaces where people are put in dangerous positions. On the opposition, opposition side, they are also decreasing recidivism, but making it more safe for people working in the workplace. I would also like to clarify the major clash about the seven years of recidivism. On the proposition side, they, will say, they say we'll commit kind of crimes, but as I stated before, these people will most likely be in jail during these seven years, so when they get out of jail, they will be okay to go and get a job, as long as it's not related to a crime. Now, I'd also like to talk about the limit in this debate. My first speaker mentioned a limit, where we have to state one example of how employ of when an employer should know to, in order to win this debate. We have stated many examples, such as in preschool, or identity theft. Therefore, we are winning this debate. Now, to move on to win the debate, I will wait on what's best for the people. On the proposition side, they are putting employers' lives at risk, employees' lives at risk. They are putting the, the very company at risk, which will eventually tear down small businesses and large corporations. Well, on the opposition side, there's the safety for employers, the safety for the people. More the companies being more efficient, which leads to a better economy, and we will have decreased recidivism. People who committed crimes can finally have a second chance to live their lives to the fullest, which is clearly what is best for people. Thank you. Because of their past crime that could have been a while ago. 
Their second argument is that there is a presumption of safety, and they brought up the, exa the examples of preschools and how if someone didn't have a background check, a kidnapper come in, could come in and, let's, for example, kidnap the child. But it is illegal to not perform background checks in a school-like setting, therefore making that example irrelevant. And even though um, um, this could still fall under our plan, because we can still perform background checks with our plan as long as everyone is given a fair chance. The New York Times, um, they also brought up an example from the New York Times saying that many companies would fire slash revoke um, a person's job application once they find out of any past crimes. But as we have keeps kept, as we've said, when everyone has, is given a fair chance and they have given the chance to explain themselves for past crimes, many of these it's no way to tell because we do not have any still of these laws today. Um, now I'll move on to rejecting our own points. Our first point is that people who can't find jobs because of previous crimes will be led back to crime again. If people do not have a job, this leads to more crime. We cannot have more crime in our society today. Everyone should be encouraged to live their lives to the fullest by having to be by being able to have a job where they can help prosper our economy. The second argument that we have is that a substantial portion of the population has a criminal record, most of which have been arrested on minor charges that don't pose um, threats to the workplace. And as we've said before, I've gone over this in our reputations, and I would like just like to repeat again that. Um, but it is not fair that people are being judged by the first glance of a job application. Um, now I'll move on to weighing this debate. I will agree also weigh it on what is best for the people. And but at first I would like to identify a major class crash point in um, uh, in this debate, which is the two plans. One being um, the two plans. I would say we have given many examples of how our plan is clearly superior in our reputations and in how it would provide people better chances of having a job and it would um, give people more, more opportunities and it wouldn't discriminate against certain people. Uh, I would also like to say they but said the if they, they would win if they give certain examples that would support their, if they give at least one example. But right. those ex examples have been refuted by me in my previous reputations and my previous speech. Um, thank you very much, and please vote for the proposition seven. Okay, step outside for a sec. I'm going to decide pretty quickly so that we can move on to this debate. Oh yeah, we only have 15 minutes. I know. Thank oh, you. you are very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Oh, do we want? Oh no, we probably want it. Oh, it's still going. Yeah. Okay. Here. I'll pause it.